Hey, what's going on everyone and uh, happy weekend. Um, since I did my last one of these, I've you know got a few more subscribers. I just wanted to touch base and show my face. So I'm gonna call this Making Amends Volume Two. So just wanna cover some of the trends that I've seen in the, the knife world over the last couple of weeks or more specifically since I did the the last making amends video and um yeah again this video is not going to be for everybody so before i get some crappy comment about you know it being irrelevant uh if, you, if you're not into this if you don't want more behind the scenes uh, move on i guess uh keep scrolling um the first thing that i wanted to cover was buy sell and trade etiquette on the secondary market and um you know i know one of my my buddies uh he actually just kind of went through it but um i really just can't stress enough like not spending the money you get from a knife so if i if i sell this um you know lone wolf harse folder to somebody don't spend the money until the person the buyer gets it in their hand and is satisfied with it um there's a very specific example of um you know selling a knife to somebody and then you know usps losing it and you know that person not being able to give this you know the the buyer back his money which is it, it's kind of icky to be honest with you um in the in the knife buy sell trade world like it, it's a really you know quick and surefire way to get you kind of blacklisted um from things um you know the the, the next uh, the next point i have for the secondary market is please for the love of god before you send out a knife that somebody purchases give it a quick wipe down right so i recently picked up a berg iron pup which i did the review of um it's you know in my um in my gallery or whatever youtube calls it but um i got this thing and actually like in the fins of it in the lock bar um there was a bunch of gunk i don't like honestly it looked like tobacco spit or something like that like please for the love of god if somebody's like giving you money for a knife clean it up before before you send it out. And that was one of the things that I worked on this morning prior to going to the post office. Um, I did end up selling it and um, you know, it's as easy as a Q-tip, some paper towels, a little bit of alcohol, just just clean it up for the, for the next, uh, the buyer. I mean, like it, it, I'm not saying it's the end of the world, but at the end of the day, like, I mean, would you wanna get, you know, a 200 plus dollar knife that, you know, has something kind of gross on it. So just, just something to think about. Um, the next thing that I wanted to bring up was just the, and, and I kind of, I, I foot stomped it in my last video that I made, but you know, when you get into these higher end knives, realizing that they're not for everybody, please make sure that like you have your stuff figured out as far as like, you know, food, shelter, your family's taken care of before you get into the knife game. Um, very frequently I see, you know, people being, you know, making a post being like, oh man, like, you know, it, it's Wednesday, if it was only Friday, I'd be able to buy this knife or whatever. Like, if that's where you're at in your life, which again, like, I'm not trying to throw shade or anything like that, but but there's more important things in your life. So, um, you know, to take care of the the people that, that are in your life first. Like, don't be spending outside of your means, I, I guess I will say, because um, I've seen that quite a few times the last couple of weeks. And kind of to uh, piggyback off of that, notion or thought um one of the things that i've seen and i actually do as well like I, i'll use paypal or venmo but you know it's one thing to have like a fun money account that you're like okay cool like i mean my savings my checking they're they're separate from my fun money which i you know can spend and not feel bad about spending money on a knife or anything like that um you know the the more successful people i've seen in this business have that kind of fun money account that they pull from and if the money's not there then either you know sell some of your knives or or just kind of kind of wait till you can build that up um the next kind of little like pet peeve of mine that i've seen quite frequently over the last couple of weeks is people posting and i'll post a picture right here um people posting in search of posts for the future right so like i mean here we have an example of somebody that was like hey like what's out there for this amount of money like you know i'm not ready to buy yet but i will be like just wait like honestly like i don't, I don't know like i if it's just like i i feel bad or something but i'm like just don't even don't even make the post i mean you can certainly window shop until then but wait till you have the money and you can feel good about spending it i mean certainly you know a knife i mean all day people could argue that it's a necessity in your life but i mean the the range is so great right i mean you could get 
a great 40 or $50 knife, that would be all you'd ever need. Or you can go up to two, $3,000 for a knife that's really nice, but you know, maybe, maybe it doesn't really fit into your lifestyle. All right, the next topic that I, that I wanted to talk about was just the status of the secondary market. Um, it is still a buyer's market and it's getting better by the day. Again, as I said in my last video, if you have some disposable income that you can you know, put into a knife right now, now is the time to buy for sure. If you're a seller, we'll, we'll get into that in a minute, but I just wanted to go over like a few of the better deals that I've seen over the, the last couple of weeks. The, the first one definitely being this, um, CRK Zon for 385 and and it did sit for about 30 minutes. Again, I had to kind of go into the the history, but I was surprised. I was like, "Whoa, this thing sold so quickly!" But a Zon, even for a user at 385, that's absolutely crazy. The the next one I'll post right here is a Shergorov Quantum Ursus, and this one had me shooketh because the guy was selling it for four hundred dollars that that's absolutely crazy but again it's a sign of the time so to speak like we're in some rough times for a seller um i'm still to this day as we speak trying to sell my quantum ursus i've listed for 475 which is definitely like the bottom line um you know Obviously, if something happens, the wheels fall off, and I'm like, I need to get rid of this thing for 400 bucks. I would easily, I, I would do that. But if it doesn't sell for 475, I'm sitting on that thing until whenever this uh, this treachery is over with. Um, the last example, and this one was crazy. I was like, I don't need it. I don't need it. I don't need it. Um, a CRK small Sebenza for 265. That's that's crazy. Like, I mean, I. I should have just bought it out of spite kind of i mean that that's the best deal i've ever seen on a small spenza and um you know kind of piggybacking on the great deals to be had i would just be a little bit like hesitant like i mean certainly a lot of people are trying to get rid of i would say more of like the made in china knives like riot we knives there's nothing wrong with them if they fit into your repertoire but if you're looking to kind of really make a killing right now concentrate on the chris reeves i recently um i picked up um you know i've had it in a couple of my videos but i did end up getting that uh carbon fiber and cosi which like i i've been after for a really long time like that to me that was always one of my like kind of critical um observations of um in, in Kosi was just i didn't really like the full titanium design and we'll get into that but i ended up picking up a carbon fiber one of those there was another person that needed money he was selling a carbon fiber um sebenza snatched that up for you know msrp plus a little bit under that and then i did end up getting this which is a small sebenza in damascus which i I really do like it. And I kind of look at this as like, so this was a user in Damascus, which I thought was kind of um, unique in a way. Like a lot of people that I've seen get these knives and, and I never want to be, I mean, it's like owning a new car. Like you'll, you'll notice every scratch on it. You know, I certainly paid for this as a user and have been carrying it and, and love it. Like I love the the Damascus on this blade. I'll, I'll probably do a review of this one, but just the lubricity and like what it feels like. Um, I mean, I can sit through like at work, I have meetings all the time and like, I can kind of sit there and just like flick this thing and, and feel, I'm like, man, th this is a, I love this knife. Like it, it's really great. It came with a little like leather pouch for it that is well worn in. I have not yet taken this thing down um, to kind of, you know, smooth out the action or anything, but I don't know guys, like I'm kind of, I've been getting back to like my roots, but I would say like, if, you know, it being a buyer's market where you can make the most damage or where there's the best deals to be had, definitely stick with CRK. Like, I mean, again, I'm, I'm giving away secrets here, but, but all kind of like the one off, certainly they're not immune to the way that the economy is or anything like that. But you know, CRK, like whether it's a, you know, bull or bear, bear market, like you, you're going to do well by, by investing in, in that brand. So snatch up those CRKs when you see a good deal for sure. All right. And a final thought on the whole, you know, market as a whole or the secondary market, I should say. So, um, you know, Devin actually let me know that DLT trading post, which, you know, for all intents and purposes, they're, 
I would use them as a gauge of like the primary knife market where it is today. I mean, they have great blades. They're awesome. I don't, I haven't bought a new knife in over a year now, just because, I mean, I, I can't get over the 10% California sales tax. And I don't think that that, <laughs> I mean, that that's not going to change, but DLT trading has actually seen a 20% drop in sales since last year. So people are not spending money right now. Um, everyone wants to trade and I will admit like it can be, it can be tempting at times to be like, oh man, I could trade this for this, whatever. Like just make sure you know what you're getting into and know that like whether you have a knife or cash, like you kind of have, you kind of have the power more so. I mean, hundred percent, if you have cash, you have the power. Like, I mean, try to lowball people with, you know, with them selling things. Cause a lot of people do. I mean, it's not saying it's a, you know, I mean, it's certainly a bad thing, but for a buyer, it's a good thing. Like, I mean, people are trying to make ends meet right now. And so, you know, don't be afraid to kind of shoot your, your shot on what, what you can afford to on the secondary market. Um, but yeah, I, I just think like staying away from those, like those weird trades where you're like, ah, oh, I've never heard of this knife before. Do a little research. Ah, oh, it looks pretty good. Like just hold fast. Like I really would. I'd either like cash out on a knife for a price that you're comfortable with or, or just sit on it if you can. The next topic that I wanted to cover were scammers and certainly on the secondary market, you know, belonging to any Facebook groups, scammers are still running rampant. And I don't know if they're getting dumber or something like that, but I've had two instances since the last video that I released. One was a Nigerian scammer clearly who stole profile pictures. Like, I mean, it's like that show catfish, right? Or people are like stealing profile pictures, but this guy was extra special in the sense that, you know, I usually like when I'm buying, if I get weird vibes from somebody I'm clicking on, you know, view their profile. And as you scroll down in this guy's profile, he actually still had pictures of like him playing soccer and stuff in, in Nigeria. And then like it changed about three weeks ago. So just be cognizant of that. Like, I mean, scammers for the most part, I think are fairly lazy, but, um, you know, the, the more posts I see in this other group that I belong to EDC go, no go, where you can essentially vouch or, you know, describe a shitty situation you had with someone. Um, there, a lot can be told from someone's vernacular. So if you're not comfortable with the way that they're ask, answering the questions that you're asking, if you're a buyer, run away. Like, seriously like it, it's not worth it like i mean there, there's enough problems out there as is with even like stateside sellers so um if you kind of get like weird vibes like i mean we see all the time like even today i saw a post where some guy was like oh like does anybody have any vouchers for this guy and it was like clearly english was this you know second language which i'm not saying is the the end all or anything like that but wasn't able to provide vouchers didn't have a clear you know, idea of the knife he was selling kind of thing. So, so just be cognizant of that and, and keep a lookout. Um, the other one, which I thought was kind of funny, this uh, guy, I'm calling him the Medford scammer. He was trying to sell this knife right here. And, um, you know, said it was like a very early Medford. Like, I mean, this knife had a flashlight on it. Like, <laughs> just, I was like, I wanted to be like, Hey, does this thing have new batteries in it or lithium? What are we talking here? But, um, yeah, I mean, you can usually tell, but please be, you know, very cautious because although there are great deals to be had out there, there's still a lot of people trying to scam. But in the last month, I've seen them get super lazy. So do your due diligence before you send money. Make sure you're researching who you're buying from. The next topic that I wanted to cover was USPS, so the United States Postal Service, and allegedly stealing packages. Now I'll post right here. So Brian Nadal from Sharp by Design, he essentially, so he usually does like pre-orders, which he said he is 100% done with. He's only going to sell to dealers, then they can deal with it. Um, he's not sending anything else to California, which I'm like, <sighs> it's kind of tough. But I mean, just to like with that, like realizing that they're, you know, I think USPS, and again, please comment below if you have any experience with filing a claim for a knife that you've insured. I used to insure my knives that I 
scent, but I've since heard that, you know, if you say it's a knife, USPS considers that a weapon and they won't actually, you know, fulfill that insurance should it be lost. So I don't know if that's true. That's just what I've heard. I've certainly like, I mean, even today I, I ship two knives via USPS, but please make sure when you're shipping a knife, like tape the ever living shit out of it like make it obvious like if you make it easy for someone i don't know if it's a postal worker i don't know if it's like your neighbor whatever if you make it easy for you know oh it dropped out and they can steal it they will do that and one of kind of the, the best practices that i've been exercising recently is so yeah, I, I love knife boxes that fit into that small flat rate box. Some people, like I actually just borrowed that um, that Chavez uh, from this guy Christian that I met. Um, you know, he's all about, you know, bubble mailers. He said like, you know, they're less likely to steal out of that. I, I don't really know. I've always done like the small flat rate. I love it when a knife box will fit into that. But one of my kind of like pro tips from experience, like if, if you make it so the knife can fall out if a hole's in it, you're it's probably going to fall out and, you know, you're going to be in a, not a world of hurt, but you're going to have to deal with a bunch of, you know, red tape, etc. One of the pro tips that I've been doing, which has worked so far, is even if you have to, like, you obviously don't want to ruin the knife box. We've talked about that before. Like, knife boxes are so important to some people, but you know, even if you wrap it in like a piece of printer paper and then tape it to the inside of a flat rate box, then if you get any holes in it, it's less likely to fall out. So I, I would definitely highly suggest that. Usually what I do when I'm sending out a knife, I'll keep the, you know, the flat rate flat as it were, um, write the address, return address, and then I'll kind of flip it over, put the knife box center line, tape it in there securely, put bubble wrap around it, or in this case, this last one that I, um, just sent my my Berg iron pup I actually like wrapped it in um, bubble wrap and then taped it to the inside of the box and then put the box together around it so um, you know j just a few like little tips that I've seen because you know certainly like if Brian Dow super straight shooter great warranty on his knives like he's very vocal and kind of transparent with what he sees etc he's convinced that USPS is kind of like knocking his knives off and, and stealing them if he sees anything like that. So, so just be cognizant of that. And, um, the other pro tip, um, if you're paying with PayPal, like PayPal will, they'll suspend your account if they see anything that resembles, you know, knife in the description, et cetera. So please, like if someone's buying a knife from you, make a plug to them to not list anything about a pointy object in the description when they're paying you. All right, the next topic that I wanted to bring up was Chris Reeve and S45VN versus MagnaCut. So certainly in 2022, like MagnaCut is all the rage. And I don't know. I mean, maybe I'm just not that experienced. Like I always thought like S35VN, which ooh, oh, this is only S30V. It's not it. Um, S35VN has kind of been like my favorite steel. Um, you know, comfortable with sharpening it, um, comfortable with using it, good edge retention, never had any issues with any, you know, rusting, etc. But one of the things that was brought up to me by a, you know, pretty renowned dude in the Chris Reeve um, group was if you can get your hands on Chris Reeves and S45 VN, like, you know, obviously MagnaCut has kind of been like the, the new kind of hotness, but similarly in the analogy that i'll use is so i like i am still even though i haven't shot in a while like i was into like you know a lot of bolt action rifles doing like elr type stuff and um i actually had the opportunity i have two rifles that were built um by uh the united states marine corps precision weapon section based out of quantico and um you know my second rifle that i had built it was a, it was a long action for sure and uh, the action that i got was long action which you know you have a bunch more options than as far as that elr category goes and, and i totally wanted to rechamber a 338 lapua magnum into 300 prc it was kind of the new hotness whatever but you know this the armor that was working on my rifle convinced me he said no like 338 lapua magnum like we have not reached the potential of that 338 Lapua Magnum. Like if you reload on your own, which I do, that there's way more to be had 
from that round. And um, similarly to the MagnaCut versus S45VN, um, one of the feedback items that I received was, and why you should buy up S45VN CRKs right now is, MagnaCut has kind of shifted the spotlight to it where these S45 VN knives are over here, like not getting any love. But, you know, th this person, which, you know, I definitely trust them. Like I, I've t I talked to him for a really long time. He was like, that potential for S45 VN, like people don't realize how good S45 VN is. It did not run its course before we looked at MagnaCut. And, you know, so so take it for what it is. That was just a word of advice that I received and wanted to pass it on to you all. All right, the next topic that I wanted to cover was a topic that I'm calling, this knife isn't stabby enough. And I kind of covered it when I reviewed this Spidey Chef, but certainly these like sheep's foot or my Chris Reeve Large and Cozy, which is also a sheep's foot. So it's the Insingo uh, blade shape or whatever. A lot of the criticism that I see for a knife blade like this, and I, I covered it a little bit in this video, but that it, it's not stabby enough, it's not stabby enough. I kind of just wanted to make a foot stomp or a plug that like, I mean, although, you know, whatever a knife is, I mean, certainly, uh, you know, Sebenza, something like this, that's this like, you know, very pointy kind of pokey, uh, you know, knife um, blade. I, you know, I'm sure that they excel with, with stabbing things, but don't make that an argument for like why you buy a knife. I mean, certainly like in, I actually, so, you know, one of my really good friends who happens to uh, to be my neighbor, um, we had a deer the other day that got hit on the road, ran into our creek, and we're like, we need to get rid of this thing because it is gonna, st <laughs> it's gonna stink. Um, you know, I and I was like, oh man, if I only had a knife to be able to facilitate moving this deer or whatever. So I mean, we ended up like, you know, hooking it up, but I ended up using my half face blades, which I'll post the picture right here of the blade shape. It was a Disaster Junior, which is not a stabby knife at all. And I can say with 100% certainty, and it was good just because it's it's been a while. Like I haven't been in the woods, haven't been, you know, hunting in a while. You know, something like this will blast through anything you need to do. And so don't like, I just, I'm kind of sick of that argument of like, oh, that, that's a cool, you know, it's super slicey, whatever, but it's not really good for stabbing. Like, I still, like, I pose the question, what are you stabbing that you can't stab with? I mean, certainly cardboard, flesh, everything like that, it, it's a non-issue. So please stop using that as an argument for like why you don't like these sheep's foot designs. They are super slicey, but at the same time, they stab and, and they stab well. So it's a, it's a non-issue. I, I don't get it. The next uh, topic that I wanted to bring up, um, and, and I've hit on it a little bit in my last couple of videos, but I would say probably when I got back into the knife game, I was all about full titanium knives. I mean, it's no secret, I really do love titanium knives, but you know, whether it was the Chavez Ultramar, this last 229 rendition that I tested out, um, I mean, anything, I don't know, like uh, any, full frame titanium knife that I try like I, the weight is always an issue for me and it, it's not like oh man this thing's heavy in my pocket I get tired it's more of just like the cumbersome nature of that knife and what I've kind of grown to really love um are kind of split frame knives like this Spyderco Spidey Chef you know notwithstanding you know you got the micarta you got the titanium on the other side um as I said in the video too with the Spidey Chef I've never seen anybody blow out uh, micarta carbon fiber G10 scale, you know, like, and like, oh man, if only this was full titanium, like, unless you're using a knife for, you know, what it's not used for, which if I was doing really heavy use, I would clear, like, I would just use fixed blades. Like that's, that's all I would be into. Um, I mean, even this like Koenig area, so, you know, I have, there's titanium on one side, it's gonna be carbon fiber on the other. It just, it really balances a knife out. Usually it's it's cheaper than a full titanium version and it's just more enjoyable. I mean, there's several kind of smaller, not wickets, but you know, pillars that I look at when, I, when I'm judging or reviewing a knife. And one of them is definitely weight and balance and the full, fi full frame titanium knives just really haven't been meeting the mail for me. And, um, you know, I, I just, I want to make that clear that, 
you know, don't don't turn your nut your nose up at you know things like Striders where it's like G10 in titanium or this Koenig Arius where it's you know carbon fiber and titanium. Give them a try. I think you'd be pleasantly surprised, and it's not like you're compromising any rigidity or anything like that. I I just I haven't seen that. I mean, again, if you if you do have experience with that, where you know a G10 carbon fiber or um, you know, micarta scale has let you down, please let me know. I've never done anything where it has. Um, and then to kind of like finish up uh, this video, I kind of wanted to give like the, the state of my collection. Um, first thing, I'm very excited. I actually ended up rescuing another Lone Wolf Harsay folder. So this is the T2 and I thought it was funny. They actually say it's in, uh, you know, I got the box with it. This thing is in great shape. Um, this is called Desert Camo for them, which I don't know which desert, <laughs> you know, inspired this, but probably pretty muddy desert, but, um, you know, still really into Lone Wolf knives. Um, I do want to get the, the T1, so like the larger version of this, the T1 Ranger. Um, this is yet another T2 that I have, but but this one, I mean, I haven't cleaned it or anything. Um, the, the action is is awesome. Like I'm, I'm really impressed with it. Um, I think coming up for me, like I would like to get a CRK Zon um, for the right price, per, um, you know, definitely, but haven't seen one yet that I really want to pull the trigger on, but that's kind of up and coming. Um, then honestly, like just kind of getting after CRKs. Um, I really do think like Chris Reeves, they're, they will hold their value the best. And the more Chris Reeves, you know, recently that I've bought, which now I'm up to three of them, I, I really do enjoy them. I think all around they're, they're a great knife. I actually just recommended one to one of my coworkers, Jeff, I know you watch this. Um, you know, kind of he was looking for an heirloom piece he could kind of pass on. Like like Chris Reeve, even though people will say it's dated, it hasn't changed or whatever, they're, they're just, they're workhorse knives, they're heirloom pieces, you know, uh, other things here and there, they're kind of gimmicky, kind of, oh man, that's great action, that's cool, whatever. But it, it's such a classic design that you really, you, you can't argue with a Chris Reeve uh, Sabenza or an Nkosi, like you can't. So, um, I would like to get the, the Zahn just so that I can hopefully compare it to my SMF. And, um, you know, I would love to make that video. So that's kind of up and coming. And, um, as far as like my participation in the secondary market, I I'm still trying to like, trying to sell some, but I have like a baseline where I'm like, okay, I'm not trying to sell these to put food on a table. So I'm going to hold on to them if they don't sell for this price. But I, I certainly have some that I'm, that I'm looking to, uh, to sell, but I'm just a little bit hesitant to, to lower the price more. So, um, with that, we'll wrap it up. I appreciate you all tuning in again. Like I said before, we have a couple new subscribers here. So just wanted to show my face. Um, I still do have a lot of, like, I have, I have quite the list of, of knives to review. Um, some of them are going to be kind of interesting. So I appreciate you all tuning in and um, yeah, we'll see you for the next uh, knife overview.